What's up? Welcome back to another video. I'm Bandit Barney. We're doing Red Dead 2 Online like we always do. Today, I'm coming to you with the best, the 10 best tips to date, currently working, best tips for beginners and experienced players in Red Dead 2 Online. Make sure you stick around to the end because we got some really valuable information. And, well, you know, actually, like, most of everything is really valuable in this. There's two tips that are just quick and easy helpful things but let's dive in one is the animal fishing method for this it's it's the best money making method in the game and you know everything right now in reddit 2 online is kind of grindy but this is very simple very easy and very effective what you want to do for this is just go kill a deer pronghorn or buck grab the carcass but don't skin it grab the carcass and then put it on your horse then travel to a river and look for some shallow waters, a sh like an area that's just meeting with the land. The water's just meeting with the land and you can put that carcass in that area. Um, there's a, more than just one place. You can do it in other places, but this is what you're looking for. And then just put that carcass there, step back, and fish will swim to the carcass trying to eat it. But the thing is, is that as soon as the fish hit shallow enough water, they just die. They curl over and eat it. And all you have to do is go over and put them in your pocket. You can farm fish so fast. One of the major benefits to this over using a fishing rod is that you get all types of fish in the area. So you're getting, instead of like a stack of 10 fish, maybe you can get two of those with the fishing rod or three. If you have bait, you're just getting like, there's like five or six different types of fish that just keep coming over and over. Very, very effective method. Number two. Now, the first is a money grind tip. This is gonna be an XP tip. And the best XP farming method is in Blackwater. It's by far the best method in the game. What you wanna do is load in to Blackwater, get to Blackwater, and there's a ticket booth there. So you get the cops on you, and you go behind this ticket booth and just get the cops as they come at you. Now, one tip for not just this method, but any XP farming method that involves shooting the cops, in order to keep them coming at you, because the cops in this game are just don't get it sometimes. They are just so slow. They You'll be killing like 30 cops, and then they'll forget where you are and you haven't moved. So in order to keep them coming at you, what you wanna do is aim down sight with your weapon, and then press up on the D-pad. And what that does is it points your gun up in the air and you can just shoot off a few rounds then. That'll keep the cops alerted to where you are and that'll keep them coming towards you as fast as possible. It's very important for these XP methods. They work so much better if the cops can keep coming and keep coming. Some of the other methods involve like going down a ladder or going up a ladder or going into a secluded area and the cops just get lost on where you are. This method is a little bit riskier, but it works much better when you're taking out the cops uh, because they don't forget where you are as easily and they keep coming in waves. Now the third tip we have for you is one that kind of follows what we just talked about XP farming. In order to utilize the best XP farming you can, you want to put special ammo in your weapon along with getting the execution. So special ammo is something you can't buy. I think the first time you can is once you get to level 31. But if you wanna get it before then, you get it from just looting different bodies and cabins and people and whatever, and you can get special ammo that way. But if you're not level 31 like I am, I'm only level 24, uh, executions are gonna help you out a ton. Basically what that is, is we saw in that ticket booth in Blackwater, the cops come around and you just time your right trigger pull at the right time. And what happens is the cop will get executed instead of aiming down sight to shoot at them. This gives you 11 experience when you do this, along with the other experience you would normally get from taking care of them. Especially if you can get an execution on the head, you get even more experience. So executions are super important to XP farming. Our fourth tip. This also involves shooting a gun, but this is gonna be a player versus player tip. The varmint rifle is the best PVP weapon. Now, if you're going in PVP games, there are certain scenarios where having a shotgun is useful, but all around the varmint rifle is the best weapon. The reason for this being is because the ridicule, when you aim down sight initially, it gets to its pinpoint accuracy faster than any other weapon. On top of this, you can shoot it quite quickly. Now I, I sampled the Litchfield repeater against the Varmint rifle here, and the Litchfield repeater is a stronger weapon. It's the best repeater you can get right now. 
but it doesn't aim as quickly and doesn't fire as fast. When you aim down the Litchfield repeater sights, the ridicule comes down maybe half as slow, maybe a little bit faster than that, but it's not as fast as the varmint rifle. And you also notice to get to that pinpoint accuracy actually takes quite some time. But with the varmint rifle, it's quick and you can take those shots, very effective, but only for headshots. Now, moving on to number five, get a second hand or off hand holster. Now you can do this before level 25, even though level 25 is the first time that you actually unlock off hand holsters. The way you do this is by going to the gunsmith and then when you're looking at the off hand holsters, pull down left trigger to view how much they cost for gold. And you can buy certain items in the game, not most things you can't, but there's certain items in the game that you can purchase before you get that level unlock by using gold. Most of us at this point have gotten 30 gold bars from Rockstar. And if not, at least most of us have gotten at least 15 gold bars from them. Now they're not super easy to come by in game, but one of the most important purchases for you gonna use for those gold bars is getting an offhand holster if you haven't unlocked level 25 yet because you can get it quickly i think the level 25 offhand holster costs only like two or three gold bars it's super valuable to get that other revolver so you can now hold two handheld uh pistols or revolvers it's very effective method for uh, carrying multiple weapons with different types of ammo. If you get a pistol, you can have that in one holster and you can get a revolver in the other. Helps with XP farming. It also helps with just versatility. So go get an offhand holster. Number six. Now, if you're like me, you started playing Red Dead 2 online and you're always wanting to keep your cores at high value, but often you're either getting griefed or you want to switch lobbies or move regions and you just go to online and you load into a different region. That's all good and it's nice that you can move around, unlike the story mode, you can get around quicker that way, but you always find yourself with your cores are lowered. And sometimes it just bothers me having lowered cores, but specifically for being able to deal with any situation you wanna have full cores. Well, it comes then beans and these consumables that cost a lot of money, but there's a way that you can get full cores very easily without spending money. All you have to do is go hunting. And instead of selling your meats, cook them on a fire and then stow them on your person or in your satchel. You take, then if you go to the weapon wheel, you won't find these meats. That's why I couldn't figure out this for the longest time. But if you hold right on your D-pad, you can go to the area where you have cooked meats and you can just eat it from there. So I did one hunting trip above Saint Denis and I have all these different meats that I now have cooked and I can get full cores at any time and I didn't have to spend any money. It's not as quick as opening up the weapon wheel like if you're in a gunfight, but it is fairly quick and it works better than anything. It's the meats that you get off of animals are the best consumables for healing your cores in the game. So go out. Get some of those meats. It's also one thing to note is when you're killing your animal, it's very important that you get a perfect kill. So a headshot with the bolt action rifle for like deer or gators, it's very important you get perfect kills. If you don't get a perfect kill, the carcass won't yield as many meats. You can get three per perfect kill, but if you don't get it, you get one and it just makes that process a whole lot longer. Number seven, this is just a quick one, easy one. Uh, if you're in a catalog and you find yourself taking a lot of time to get out of the catalog, do yourself a favor and just hold down circle or B if you're on Xbox. Just hold it down, it'll close the catalog completely rather than just going back to the index pages and you can then not feel like you're wasting this 10 seconds. It just feels way longer than it actually is. I know it's not a lot of time, but if you don't know this, start doing this. I, For me, until I figured this out, I always didn't want to go into catalogs and now that we have the player catalog we can open anywhere it's more helpful than ever so just hold down be your circle and you'll you'll completely close the catalog hand it back to the cashier if you're at a store or put it away if you're opening the player catalog number eight fight mechanics now this is one that's made uh might be easier or better for newer players but even maybe uh you've been playing for a little bit and you didn't realize this when you're in fist fights if you're holding square the whole time to block yourself, I don't know what button that is on Xbox, I think it's X. If you're holding that down to block for yourself, you're not fully utilizing your mechanics because what you can do is square can be a, web, uh, a button used to parry a punch. 
If you see a punch coming at you, if you tap square and then tap circle or B afterwards, you can parry that punch and punch back. And this is the most effective way to win fist fights. You get a combination of the squares and circles. Occasionally you'll hold it, but you get a combination of these and you can parry punches. You can end up headbutting players. You can even get them in chokeholds. This is a good and very effective way of winning fist fights. I didn't know this earlier on. I just kind of did some more fist fights and found this out. If you don't know, start using it. Use your square or X for a parry. Okay, now our ninth and 10th tips, and these are my favorite ones. Very, very effective. Number nine, getting into lobbies away from other players. If you are using some of our first tips, XP farming or fishing, or if you're just grinding in any form in Red Dead 2 Online, you want to be away from other players to one, limit the amount of griefing you'll receive, and two, Make sure if you're like fishing or hunting that another player is not there shooting everything or fishing for it before you can get to it. Basically limiting your resources. To get in a lobby away from other players, all you need to do is open up your start menu, go to online, load into a region away from where you wanna play. Load into that region, head to a fast travel station and fast travel then to your location. The way Red Dead 2 Online works is when you load into a, a, the game, it puts you in a lobby with players around you, trying to uh, increase uh, player interaction. The map's huge, so it loads you into a lobby with players around you. Load into a region where you don't wanna be, and when you fast travel, you stay in the same lobby. So load away from where you wanna go. Let's say you're doing a the Blackwater XP method, load into Lemoyne, and then just fast travel to Blackwater, and you won't be bothered as much. It doesn't always work with perfect success, but that's why we have our 10th tip, which is how to get into private lobbies. Completely private, you're the only player there. It is Red Dead 2 Online, but you're the only player. And this is actually very, very easy. All you need to do is go to a stranger mission. Now it's important that the mission is a stranger mission and not just a stranger mission that you've done before and now you know the name of that person that gives you the mission. It has to be when you open up your map and hover over them, a stranger that gives you the mission. Once you start that mission with the stranger, as soon as the dialogue's over, the cutscene, whatever it is, you'll be in a private lobby. You don't need to complete the mission. You don't need to do anything from there. You'll be in a private lobby at that point. And that's how it is until you load into another game or region or just basically reset your lobby. Very easy way to get in a private lobby and do an XP grind, a money grind. Just explore the world of the online and its different mechanics without other players there to grief. Or maybe you just want to have some alone time out on the prairie. Thank you for watching. I appreciate uh, you guys and your support that you've given the channel. We, you know, we just started this channel a few months ago. And your support means everything in growing this thing. Seeing a lot of new interaction on the videos recently. I really appreciate that. Subscribe if you haven't. We come out with Red Dead 2 content every single day. We try to make it as helpful as possible. Thank you for stopping by. Appreciate you. And hope to see you in the future.